Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to different design product reviews. And today I'm going to discuss Envision Studio comparison with Sketch app and how do those things compare and how do they stack up? Who has the upper hand? And as you know, Envision Studio is just an early access, meaning they're still in development. They're rolling out updates every week. We're seeing feedback from the users and trying to improve and make it an all-rounded suite for prototyping uh, screen design, things of that nature. Meanwhile, Sketch is a bit more on a UI crafting side. And that's where I think the main differences are. And I'm just gonna cover just the differences because I think similarities you can pick up right off the bat when you just see the tool and how the tools are actually spread out, what sort of functionality there is. So right off the bat, if you launch the studio, let's say, you would be presented with quite familiar view, but but totally different, you already can tell that the UI is going to be dark. So let's say if we would create um, or perhaps import a sketch file, which doesn't really work that well. If you've seen one of my previous videos where I tried to compare principal app and uh, an Envision Studio, it tend to break apart. Uh, you can see a link somewhere around here. Let's start creating by new one. That's going to be easier to grasp exactly what the tool is about. And so right off the bat, you land on this kind of artboard view. And as you can see, the look and feel is really dark. It's what I think would happen if Photoshop on a dark one would have a baby with Sketch, let's say, or principal app. It seems like, you know, it's a like an old new type of deal, which is still feels fresh because now as we're transitioning to more white sort of artboards and white tools, this, this kind of like feels like a fresh day. It makes you focus on your artboards and your designs much more than let's say wide surface around you know around your designs and as you can see there are a few different elements here my artboard is already marked as a home icon and that means that this is where our prototype would start uh, and where we would land if we preview let's say but let's call this testing just so it, there is no kind of like that vanilla language quite irritates me but uh, as you can see the navigation is quite simple it's kind of like an interactive list. Um, so let's say we can have multiple pages and then within pages we can just go, you know, sidewise and, and explore that list. So the nesting is quite simple and I think it's a bit much more intuitive than let's say in Sketch, especially the beginners tend to misunderstand what symbols are for, why is it a separate, let's say, page and so forth. And I think this is kind of linear and simpler approach, even if, you know, you don't really know what let's say artboards each page contains maybe that's the next step by the way but uh just to begin with okay so we can hide those artboards or we can format it and formatting it is quite simple so you can again you can reselect your artboard template you know you can deselect and select a different artboard as a main page you can enable scrolling which is one of the features which is quite new because Envision has its ecosystem of a prototyping. It already allows you to kind of, you know, set some boundaries and allows it to be much more fluid. So let's say if I would know that my content is going to exceed this uh, and I wanted to scroll, I'm just going to select vertical and then everything else is going to be automated in the end. And that's what Sketch is missing right now because it's not really, it doesn't have its own ecosystem yet. Or if it does, it's in quite early stage. Depends on you know the time you're looking at this video. But uh, other than that, we have fills, we have layout options, we can enable grid. So I like that it's not hidden because it's quite an essential bit in the product design where you do need to set some boundaries when you design, especially from nothing. And I think this comes in real in handy because I hate like shortcuts or hidden under menus where you just you have no idea where that grid is, especially if you don't use it every day or you're a newbie. So I think these features are quite essential to just show right off the bat. I want to emphasize the kind of like the layout itself and you know the graphical interface of the tool because I quite like that it's so minimal and it's probably minimal because it's early access. We're so probably gonna you know bash it with different functionality eventually. But what I like about it is that it's a bit more intuitive and not as vanilla as let's say sketches. So for example, if you wanna add a new thing, it's all hidden under arrow. As you can see, if I click on that, it just expands and allows me to add anything I would like to. So shapes, custom shapes of pen tools, text, images, new artboards, 
as you can see, we have uh, a different icon for that. And, and then, you know, design it that way. So let's say for this demo, uh, just to continue on demoing some of functionality, let's add a new type of banner or maybe make it the rich purple. As you can see, everything else here, the formatting options are quite simple. Uh, you have fills, stroke, shadows, inner shadows, interactions is new because again, it integrates with InVision ecosystem where you can export it directly in InVision or preview it as an interactive thing. But for now, uh, what you can do with all the objects, let's say shapes, is what I think is a bit different in InVision and what I really like. As you can see, we have these type of blue icons as well as grayed out ones. And I think this is so much more intuitive way to represent um, the actual flow, especially if our boards are gonna adjust and if you design it responsibly. So let's say you design an iPhone mockup, but you also have to consider iPad or Android and how is it gonna flow. These options are actually much more intuitive to lock it in. So just to demonstrate it to you, at the moment it's locked in in left and top corners. However, if I would say center it like that in the top as well, and the artboard would be duplicated and I would reduce, like I increase the size or I would increase the size of the prototype, it would just automatically adjust and, and float it. And in Sketch, it's, it's a bit tricky. You kind of have to test it multiple times to understand what it does. Here, meanwhile, you just, you know, it's three options and it's easy to toggle and understand what is what. So I give kudos to product designers at Envision because that's neat. I like that small, big detail like that. Anyways, next thing, just what I wanted to show, maybe to mention the interactions because that's what is like a competitive edge for Envision. It has its own ecosystem. It's a strong tool. You can already craft visuals. It's like a simpler version of Sketch. I mean, you can add fills. You cannot really add yet, let's say, an image fill or all those things which Sketch got with every single iteration. Um, just to go back to interactions, if let's say on tap, we want to do something, we can just do it here. So interactions is a built-in inside the tool. It's not a plugin like Sketch would have, you know, or something like what we're now experimenting, which is quite simple, just slide to slide animations and transitions. Envision Studio has a competitive edge because they are added motion, which doesn't really work that well. If you saw my principal app video, it's not as smooth. It takes a lot of power. Um, I think it's really, maybe it's GPU dependent or something like that because it was crashing a lot and it took a lot to actually process it. So I think there's a lot of space for, for improvement, but they're on a good track with this. So now as you know the basics, other options out there, you know, the bolt, I mentioned in other videos, is to add interactions to any item. Then we have different things like masking, creation of components, um, combinations of different shapes. So you can subtract, you can combine the shapes, you know, all that jazz, which is typical. You can edit paths. Again, this is, I mean, it's as typical as it could be. I don't think it's any different from Sketch. Maybe just the layout is a bit slightly, you know, modified. But what I wanted to show you, which is the last thing probably, is uh, Envision Studio components compared to Sketch Symbols. And keep in mind that Studio is still in early access, and I think I'm gonna mention it a lot going forward because it's it's like a like a sprout. It's still in development. It's still growing. And just to show you what component is, let me create a text layer. So let's say. Uh, Hello friend, it's gonna be an app. That's one of the best apps ever. Right, as you can see, even the text uh, rendering, it's quite choppy. You have those sort of web type of deals. I'm not really sure why is that happening. I think it's just the text rendering engine because if we would preview it, we would still get those kind of like tiny webs. I don't know why. But as you can see, that's another thing which Envision has as a preview. Of the prototype it doesn't look too bad but it needs improvement uh, so let's say we are gonna add the component of this header thing and we're happy with it for whatever reason we'll just click on that uh, icon and let's say this is gonna be our header component and as you can see there is a tick to go to component master which you can edit it right off 
and boom, we open a new canvas. So as you can see, the component has state one. However, the multiple states are not yet supported. So I think it's an exit iteration because if we say state one, naturally there's gonna be multiple states and then you can kind of nest it in symbols much better or in components much better. So that's the difference. And I think as you can see in, in layer list, we have all those components. However, to edit it, you need to say, you need to click on one of those, let's say edit master, and then you can edit further or edit this instance here, which wouldn't affect the master. So it's simple. It's, it's how usually the components or masters work across the board. I think the interesting bit here is that the nesting of actual components is just slightly different. So as you can see, we have header component, we have different states inside the header component, which means we can add different backgrounds, different icons, you know, nest it in a kind of like a pseudo library. However, we also have library of the components. So I think the gap between sketch symbols, it has a library of those components and when you go linear, deeper, deeper, deeper. So it kind of like gradually cascades crowd linking, which is, I think, simple on its own way and slightly different take from, you know, sketch symbols, which takes time to master and to understand. And this is a thing from the get go, people are gonna know much, much better. It's, um, as you can see, the top bit has layer switch and the component switch. And the second icon is where your uh, component library resides. And header component is our header item. So this sums up the differences between Envision Studio and Sketch. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if so, give a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, leave a comment below if you liked it. How do you think Envision Studio is going to evolve? Thanks a lot for watching this and see you next time.